The following program is produced by Marshfield Community Television. <laughs> um, right here in the Wisconsin Rapids, Port Edwards, Nicusa area, the Wisconsin River flows right straight through the middle of practically all these communities. And there is a 60 foot drop in the level of the water in a distance of about 15 miles, roughly from Buren, which is just about four or five miles north here, down to Nicusa. A 60 foot drop. And that's what all these little lumber mills, and there were a lot of them in this area right here in that 15 mile stretch that used that drop of water for their power back as early as 1840. Um, right now, in that distance of 15 miles, there are five dams with a hydroelectric plant at each one. And uh, these dams are uh, very modern today, the concrete, uh, steel gates, and they weren't that way when they were built, though. And they had to, uh, the, the dams even today, though, are equipped, or most of the four of them are, with what we call flash planks. They're timbers about four feet high on top of a stone foundation, and these flash off in high water. And it happens almost every spring of the year. It's sort of a safety valve. And uh, when that happens, Two days time, they put new ones on, but the river is drawn down. Now, about 10 years ago, they took advantage of that spring flash off of those safety planks, and they pulled the river way down to work on the foundation at Port Edwards, the foundation of the dam. And it was down all summer long. The riverbeds literally dried up. Um, you'll see in a map in a minute, uh, there's really two channels at Port Edwards of the river and uh, only one channel was pulled down so that you could actually walk out to just a trickle, not much wider than that, where the water was running through, which was normally, the whole thing was filled with, I'll show you on the map when we get to the slide. <coughs> Excuse me. So that gave us a, a good chance to go out on the riverbed. We could walk out, it dried up, and uh, that's where these pictures came from. I have a friend who had a private plane and he flew over the part of the area taking pictures from the plane. So you'll see some aerial views of what I'm talking about. Um, it also gave us a good chance to go out and look for lost relatives that might be laying, old cars that have been stolen. But uh, anyway, uh, back in 1853, 1853, these lumber uh, sawmill owners decided to form a company to control the river. And they put in more dams. Uh, they built wing dams, which were little, uh, just like it sounds, a wing that stuck out into the stream to divert the water a certain direction, or the logs into a certain channel of the river. Uh, that company was formed by the lumber mills, but they sort of folded up. It fell by the wayside. And then along in 19, uh, seven, the Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company was formed. Did the same thing, but they went a little further. They built reservoirs up and down the river. And the Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company is very healthy, still operating. It's uh, managed by the industries and hydroelectric plants that uh, have facilities on the river. And the Wisconsin River has the distinction of being, if I recall, the only river in the country that is operated and controlled, the water flow is controlled by industry rather than by a federal or state agency. And it's this Wisconsin Valley Improvement Company. And they're trying to impond water, uh, let it go at certain times, keep the flow steady all year long during the dry season and capture it during the spring runoff. Um, I think with that, I'm ready to go into some slides and these slides were, I took the ones on the ground, my friend took the ones from the airplane, and it shows what's under the water now, what these uh, lumber sawmill operators built. 
in order to uh, facilitate the sawing, of, the transporting of logs and lumber rafts. So we've got two uh, things that are going to be transported down the river. Get the logs to the sawmill and then get the lumber. Remember, there's no railroads here back in 1840. They didn't come till about 1871 or two or three. And uh, so they built extensive stone work, booms, cribs, dams. And that's what I'd like to show you right now. So let's see what we got here. Uh, this is John Edwards' sawmill at Port Edwards. And uh, this is right where the paper mill is today. And I, I just, I said there was no railroads here to 1873, and yet you got railroad tracks here. Well, those were little tracks. And if you look right about in the center of the uh, picture here, there's a little cart. They piled the lumber that was sawed in the mill, piled it on the cart, wheeled it out by hand, pushing the cart by hand out to the drying piles where it would be dried out. Um, now that might not be real sharp to you people in the back, but there's a, a good map that this is a copy of here laying on the table up front. And I, this is the first part of that map. And uh, we're going to start down here. The Port Edwards Mill is right here. Here's a wing dam. Can you see it back there, those black marks? If you can't, well, just move forward. Lots of seats. This is a mill pond here. This is an island in the river. And this is the main channel of the river coming down here. Um, if you notice, there's a uh, remains of an old bridge right up here. There are booms here. You're going to see pictures of these in a minute. There are some more uh, uh, cribs here. Here's a ramp. You're going to see a picture of that, and I'll explain it when we get there. This is the village of Port Edwards. The Alexander House is up here somewhere. So we'll see that on the next map. This is the uh, mill pond at Port Edwards. Now this steel work here, this is taken from the water tower on top of the mill. So that's what the steel work is. But what I'm pointing out here is there are some of the uh, cribs of rock that held back a boom. Phil mentioned a boom, and you saw that yellow thing? This is a boom made of logs held together, log get next to log held together with a chain. And I think you sold some of those chain that held those logs together to make a boom last night. Uh, you notice the mill pond, this is the mill pond, covered with logs. Now this picture was not taken during the lumber era. This was taken right after it converted to paper making. But they still floated the pulpwood logs up to the mill. And that's what their storage area here. These logs are waiting to go into the paper mill. Uh, now we're getting into, remember I said uh, 10 years ago they pulled that pond down? And look at the logs that are sticking up. I got a question for anybody. If you can answer this, I've asked this every time I've shown this. Why are so many of them sticking up like porcupine quills? <laughs> These sunk. They get waterlogged. With all those logs flowing, some sunk. And but when they did, and when they pulled out, look how they're sticking up. They didn't lay down flat. Why? I don't know. But anyway, those are some of those logs that sunk. I knew this man here, Jack Kaiser. Uh, he lived in Port Edwards. Uh, he liked his beer. And uh, he had a part-time hobby. He had a raft. And he would go around in the mill pond. And he had a pike pole. And he'd fish around in the bottom trying to hook onto those logs that had sunk. And he would drag them up onto this raft that he had. And when he got the raft covered with logs, he'd take them down to the mill, sell them to the mill. The mill had bought them once already, but now they had to buy them again. But, <laughs> well, it's salvagers' rights. And he had salvagers' rights. And he got a, maybe a dollar for his logs or whatever, I don't know. The first place he headed to was the local Switch Tavern. Get rid of it. All right. Um, this thing right here, and this thing here, and the remains of this. There are three booms here. Uh, cribs, rather. A crib is nothing more than a rock, a log crib filled with rock. And it was to anchor these booms on. This one was just ahead of the Port Edwards sawmill. And it was holding back those logs that we saw in a previous picture, also for the paper mill. Um, here the river, as I say, is pulled down a good distance. And uh, there's one up close. You can see, whoops, let's go back one. You can see the uh, 
some of the timbers that held this big pile of rocks. They were all man-made. They didn't have a bulldozer or a crane to dump those rocks in, so you had a group of men who were talking back in the 1840s and 50s, took these big timbers, you're going to see some up close in a minute, uh, they were spiked together, spikes this long, and then filled with rock, no doubt by hand. I really have yet to find out where the heck all that rock came from, because we're pretty sandy around here. Um, that's the channel of the river. My daughter had a canoe, and she put it in at the uh, Port Edwards Dam and was going to go down to the mill, and she did. And that's a distance of maybe three quarters of a mile in her canoe. She tried to go back upstream. And as you can imagine, the flow down through that little narrow channel, when usually the river is up to the tree line, the current was pretty much for her. She couldn't do it. And she dragged her canoe out down the lower end by the Port Edwards Mill, walked back to get the, her, she had a little tricycle arrangement for transporting her canoe, but there was still a current going through there, but most of the river has been dried up. Um, this is a ramp made out of rocks, or slabs of concrete, I would say. This was along the side of the island. There was a railroad track up here, and uh, they unloaded logs, just dump them and rolled them down this ramp into the river, which would be over here. So it was sort of an unloading ramp. And uh, there's where the um, railroad track was, right up there. In fact. The last time I was over there, that railroad, uh, there were still some ties. You could find a few spikes laying along there. Uh, there they are, railroad ties. That's uh, where they had a track there, unload the railroad cars, roll them down that tram, or not a tramway, uh, that uh, ramp into the mill pond to store them until they're ready to pull them up into the mill. Uh, some tie plates, you can see one right there. These are laid on the, on the wooden tie and then the rail rested on that. The holes for driving the spikes to hold the rail in place. Now we're upstream about uh, above those other booths. These are a little more better, a little better preserved. Again, you can see the size of the timbers that held the pile of rocks. These were spiked together. Those are still in there, but you're not gonna see them because the water is way up to the tree line now. And you can see also that the river has pretty well, the river bed has dried up and plants are growing on it. That's how long they had the river down for, which made it convenient to walk out on it rather than walk in muck or mud. But these are two uh, bo uh, cribs that held a boom of logs, again, uh, before they went up to the mill to the next crib. Uh, there they are a little closer. Same, same two as we just saw in the previous picture. Uh, that's the remains of an old bridge that went over onto that island. Lewis Alexander, who was president of the paper mill, took over when they built the paper mill, 1895. Lewis Alexander in the 19, uh, late 20s, 1920s, was going to build a huge public park rec recreation area over on that island. Tennis courts, small diamond, even a swimming pool, and he started with a bridge, which there's the remains of it, to get over there. It was not a highway bridge, it was going to be a pedestrian bridge, but um, that was in the late 20s, 1929. Guess what happened? The Depression came about a year later, or two years later, and the idea never materialized. Uh, well, that's yours truly looking at something. <laughs> now we're, we take the same map and we go upstream a little bit to the north end of Port Edwards. The Alexander House is right around in here. And uh, there's where L.M. Alexander was building his park. There's the bridge that was going to go over to it. And uh, here's the Port Edwards Dam. Uh, excuse me, here's the Port Edwards Dam. And now we're going to see all of these cribs of rock going all the way up here. In fact, they go all the, almost up to, there are cribs right out here in Wisconsin Rapids too. We didn't get up that far. This is the Port Edwards Dam, part of the Port Edwards Dam. And what you see on the right there, 
goes into the mill pond, the main channel of the river is going way around on the other side of the trees, and they'll unite way over there on the wall somewhere. <laughs> um, this is a Bennett photograph. There are two of them there, two pictures, and these are lumber rafts going through the dells of the Wisconsin River. Now, I include this picture because, as I said, it wasn't just a matter of floating logs to the sawmill. It was a matter of floating the uh, lumber to a marketplace. And uh, they've built huge rafts. If you were at Alexander House yesterday or at the Museum of the Rapids, you saw miniatures of these rafts. These rafts were uh, not as wide as this room, but probably twice as long. And uh, they came in three sections. Here's a major raft here, three smaller rafts. This one has been split apart to get through the dells. So that was a means of getting lumber to the marketplace, Dubuque, Iowa was one of the big places to sell the lumber because they could load it on railroads there. Rafting came to an end around 1873 or 4. When the railroads came, there was no need of floating these down the river anymore. That was men working out. Uh, these rafts didn't always make it through without a few fatalities. And this is a grave that's right at Port Edwards at the dam. Uh, a lot of research has been done on this. And uh, the grave is that of none other than John Jones. Mm -hmm. What more common name could you find for a person? But uh, John Jones died. Now, a lot of controversy, as I say. A lot of research has been on John, done on John. Uh, that he died of smallpox. Bury him wherever you could real fast, maybe. He fell off a raft, maybe. Uh, he was working on the dam, fell off, maybe. However, one old timer, a pioneer in Port Edwards, wrote that his nickname was not John, uh, he wasn't called John Jones, he was called Whiskey Jones. <laughs> that might explain, so, and that he was a teamster for the John Edwards Lumber Company. And John Edwards had his barn, oh, just a short ways from here. So I have a feeling, too, that John Jones was Whiskey Jones and didn't have enough money for a grave site in a cemetery and was buried alongside the riparian rights. You know, so many feet on each side of a stream is public land. Anyway, John Jones is buried there. Now, there are other graves along the river. And uh, I've seen a few of them, but it's interesting that uh, in a book entitled by Richard Durbin, The Wisconsin River, an Odyssey Through Time and Space. On page 38 of that book, he said that 40 men were drowned between 1840 and 1873, and 27 in one year. Now, I find that maybe a little exaggerated, but that's why I told you the exact page to look for it, and uh, maybe that's what uh, we use Trump's term for, fake news. <laughs> anyway, that's one of the fellows that's buried right at the Port Edwards Dam. There's his tombstone. Now, that's been replaced with a newer one, thanks to Ron Harris, who you met last night. And they, he, Ron took it upon himself to get a new stone in place. Uh, another one of those cribs of rock. We're up above the Port Edwards Dam. Again, notice all the logs that sunk, and they're sticking up like porcupine quills. Uh, now we're at the port, above the Port Edwards Dam, and uh, that rock there, uh, I don't, it, it doesn't seem natural. There are a lot of rocks in the river. That's why all these dams and cribs that are built uh, to get around these rocks and boulders that are in the river. And uh, there's a natural rock right there, but uh, you wanted to avoid a lumber raft, hit one of those, it could be demolished. And, Instead of a nice raft or a pile of lumber floating down the river, you'd have boards floating down the river. So to avoid hitting that rock and, uh, as they called it those days, saddle bagging the rocks, which means going instead of going down the normal channel straight, they go sideways, hit a rock, break in half. Uh, 
And this is a close-up. Remember I said how they built these uh, out of big uh, timber or logs? There's one, rock fill. There's a spike sticking out right there. You can see the size of the spike. I would say they were at least 15 inches long. That's the Port Edwards Dam with the gates. And uh, there's a modern crib. Instead of being built of logs, it's built out of square timbers about a foot square and filled with rock. And this holds back a boom that's still there right now. However, it's not holding back logs. Fair part of it is right there. And its purpose is to divert ice and debris from going down to the Port Edwards Mill hydroelectric plant, divert it, shove it down the main channel of the river to the next guy downstream. Uh, as I say, that's the modern. Those are the cribs of rock right above the Port Edwards Dam. And uh, the boom is, goes from crib to crib to crib. To develop, this is the mill pond. The uh, dam is over here. Get the logs to go around that way, down the river to the main channel. And as I say, shove them down in Akusa and let them worry about them. Um, some of the things you find under the water, I don't know. Uh, if we would have had this big chain, oh no, this is the chain that holds those logs to get those uh, booms together. I think you had some of those for sale last night. Question, who owns the land under the water? Can you salvage things like that? I think you can salvage, but who owns it? I think it's public property. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's riparian rights so, under the water and so many feet on each side of it. However, Salvagers have rights to anything that you gather underneath. And I got a collection of old bottles I found on the bottom. Oh, excuse me, I didn't tell you about this one. Um, right about where the Alexander House is, there's a small island, not much bigger than this room. Mostly a rock, but there are a few trees growing out of it. And uh, the sawmill, John Edwards and his sawmill, which is downstream from there, he uh, wanted to avoid sending his logs down to the uh, main channel of the river. He wanted them to go down into his mill pond. And so he had a boom. Now, these booms, there were a lot of them. It was like you could switch them around. You could move these booms so that logs would go. It was like turning switches in railroad yards. Send these log rafts or booms wherever you wanted keep the lumber rafts from the Wisconsin Rapids Mill into over in the cha main channel of the river. And uh, it was, there were so many that John Edwards, who had the sawmill at Port Edwards, he actually had a person on his staff called Superintendent of Booms. So it was a full-time job. Am I all right, John, on time yet? Hell yeah. Um, uh, this is, might look repetitious, but these are all different ones, believe me. <laughs> uh, that's my wife up close to one of those cribs of rock to give you a close view of how they were constructed. This perhaps, uh, this one is an old one because they're using logs, but that one that still diverts the ice and debris, that's built out of square timbers. Uh, there's one of the spikes that held those timbers together. I guess it might be a little more than 15 inches. Now this is the remains of what I referred to earlier as a wing dam. And there are lots of these in the area. All the way up, probably all the way up the river, as far as you want to go. Uh, this happens to be one right not too far distance from the Alexander House. And it was a pile of rocks that jetted out into the river uh, at an angle to divert the flow uh, to, a, to the main channel and not, so the logs wouldn't get hung up on the shoreline. Same thing, a little wing dam. Uh, another one, not very sharp in the picture, but it's there. Now, as I say, John Edwards wanted to get his logs to come down this channel here. Now, rocks and rocks. But this channel went down into John Edwards's mill pond. And he had to divert his logs down into there. And yet he had to provide access for other uh, 
for the lumber rafts for the mills further upstream, like Wisconsin Rapids, Buren, all the way up to Tomahawk, they had to go down the far channel, the main channel of the river. So again, you had a series of booms over on the right there. And uh, remember, all this is underwater. The water is way up to the tree line here. So you had good floating conditions. Uh, that's that channel he's going to try and get his logs through. And uh, well, another little wing dam to help control the flow. Ah, here's an interesting picture. This is right across from the Alexander House. And uh, when the river's down, you, know, you were at the Alexander House yesterday, and I don't know if you realize the river was right across the highway. The entire bank of that river for a distance of maybe 100 yards, 75 yards probably, is lined with big timbers like that, spiked together about that high one on top of the other. And the reason was, as the logs came down that little channel into Edwards's Pond, there's a curve there and a little rock island, the logs would have a tendency to go into the bank. So that was sort of a diversion wall to hit that bank and continue on down. Otherwise, they're gonna gouge into the side and could develop into a nice big log jam as we know them today. So that whole bank of the river right across the street from the Alexander House is lined. Uh, oh, there's a good view of it right there. About uh, oh, three to four feet high, normally underwater, but the logs, as I say, were going to hit that, and rather than gouge themselves into the bank, divert themselves and go down into John Edwards' pond. View of the same thing. And the same thing. Now we're in the third part of this map that's on the table. We're up above, well above the Port Edwards Dam. And you notice those square marks all the way up? Excuse me. Those square marks, those are uh, cribs of rock. And you're going to see some aerial pictures of them in just a moment. Uh, this little island here is, if you're familiar with this area, Edgewater Haven Nursing Home is right over in here. So that island right there is right across from the Edgewater Nursing Home. There was a boom across there because they didn't want the logs to go down that way. Uh, there's another one here to divert the logs down this way rather than behind that island. And on that island, I've been over there, right on the tip of it, there's a big outcrop of rock coming out. And mounted in that rock is a steel ring. I can't help but think that some of those that we saw last night big ring like that with a, a usually a piece of steel underneath it uh, where they tied up part of the boom, maybe part of the rafts if they wanted to as they took them down through the Port Edwards Dam. Each of these dams that were built on the river had to provide a sluice way to let the lumber rafts go through. So John Edwards could not dam up the river. He had to provide a means for these lumber rafts from Wausau and Beeren and so forth, all the way up the river to get through. So, uh, and then on the Port Edwards Dam, there's another one, that, or just below the dam, there's another big rock with a steel ring on it. And I asked one, someone once how they mounted that steel ring in that hard, solid rock. He was an engineer involved with building dams, and he said they, they drilled a hole in the rock. That I don't know how. How do you drill a hole in a rock that deep? Anyway, about that, about uh, two inches or three inches, about two inches in diameter, and they dropped a piece of metal in there that was tapered to a, not a point, but a, a wedge on the top. So drop that steel post in the hole. It's tapered on the top. Now the ring had another steel post about the same size, but it had a groove cut in it on the bottom. So here's the top one, here's the bottom one. It fit over the top like that. And then they pounded it in. The more you pounded it in, the more that top one spread out and anchored itself. I'm a hell of a poor engineer, so I can't explain it much better than that. But anyway, that's the way it is. And there are those rings that are still in there, in case you want to go over and take a look at them. Um, a series of, uh, there was a boom. This kept the logs from going behind that little island. Oh, a few more things that you find under the air. Uh, 
uh, now this one's not under the water. I, got my, I have my hand on a birch tree. A birch tree you think of as white. You people are forest. You ever hear of Wisconsin? A uh, river birch? River birch has sort of a pinkish bark on it, right? And I suppose they only grows along the Wisconsin River. Anyway, that's a, uh, uh, I guess they call them river birch. In the view of a river birch. Um, a pile of, of these big, uh, I don't know if you can deter it, uh, deter see what they really are, but a pile of big spikes that uh, they use for building these. This is all underwater. Notice the vegetation that's grown up. I don't know why these are there, but this is laying on the riverbed. Nice sandy spot in the river. White limestone rocks. I don't know why they're laying there. I, I think maybe, I'm guessing, but at one time in the process of making the paper at Port Edwards, they used limestone to make a chemical called calcium bisulfite. Usually they used it up. The limestone dissolved in the acid. Why they got out here, I don't know. But they were similar to what they used in the uh, pulping process at Port Edwards. Uh, something else I found, a big chunk of steel. I don't know what it is. It was too big to take home, so I left it there. <laughs> Next time they have the river down, your children can go and pick it up. A uh, steel, uh, coil of uh, steel cable. Now this is the kind of cable that they uh, are on the cranes that move the logs off of railroad cars today. But uh, why there's a pile of, a coil of it laying out there in the bottom of the riverbed, I don't know. And this one is very, very puzzling. Now you're not going to be able to discern what it is, but right there, out in the river, is a set of railroad wheels. Way out, in the, almost not quite in the center, this is uh, just above the port mill, this is all normally underwater. But here's a set of railroad wheels. I'm only guessing, I wasn't there, but I'm guessing that they were probably an anchor for one of the booms. My time up? No, no, no. Uh, that they were probably an anchor for that boom that was right above the Port Edwards Mill. Uh, this is right opposite Main Street. Again, I don't know what it is. I wasn't there, as I say, but notice these boards are, these are boards, not logs. And they're laying, definitely not dropped there by nature, I don't think. Is that, uh, where is that located? Is that right across from Terry Torment's house. Down by the mill. Uh, Main Street. Yeah. yeah. That may be slab wood. Uh, why, why would they dump it in there? They did up north. They dumped they? it in the lakes. They cut the slab ends off and dumped it in the lakes. Put it on the ice and let it, because yeah. they're, they're lined up here nicely, but... Uh, same thing again. That's just a guess. Uh, a couple more things. That thing over there is a uh, air brake hose from a locomotive car. That's the uh, coupling. That's the rubber hose. I don't know what that thing is. And they're one of the spikes. Any idea, anybody, what that thing might be? It's made out of iron. No comments. Okay. Uh... Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know what I was looking Another thing, like I say, we look for old cars, lost relatives. Uh, this one we only found the tire for. And I got home, I took my shoes off. And they were caked with mud, because some of, this place, some of these places are still wet. And uh, there was one place where I went to take some pictures where it hadn't dried out, but I thought it did. And honest to God, I got out there and I was sunk in halfway up to my knees. And it was muck, you know, like quicksand. And I actually fell over and I was down on all fours. I was scared. And naturally, uh, but I got out, as you can see. <laughs> and I got home, I took my shoes off and they were caked with mud. I scrubbed them, scrubbed them and scrubbed them, put them out here to dry. I never did get rid of that mucky smell and they went in the garbage. Um, that's another picture of uh, that ramp where they unloaded logs. Remember, I should have had that earlier. Uh, this is a uh, down at Nikusa. Uh, this is a, 
a dam that was built. Some say it was Whitney, Daniel Whitney's dam, that it built the shingle mill or sawmill down there. Uh, it's about opposite, it's about where Riverside Park is at Nikusa now. And uh, it's a nice picture of that uh, blue heron. But anyway, there was a dam across here. Still there. That you can see usually every spring when they pull the water down about three feet. You can see that, those timbers in there yet. And that completes my little presentation. I thank you for being patient. If you've got some quick questions, uh, Yes. When the water level was drawn down and you were able to go out and take those pictures, was that about the same water level as uh, Edwards and the early pioneers would have seen naturally occurring? Um, I would say very close, yes. So However, Edwards rock came. Channel, for instance, he saw the rock. Yep. However, Edwards did come in and build a dam and well, right when he built his sawmill, he built a dam. However, I have a description of that dam at Alexander House. And it was not a concrete steel gates, as I said earlier. It was built out of rock and brush. And uh, they developed a head of maybe three feet, four feet. But then, as years went by, these dams were enlarged, made more substantial as with concrete. I remember when the Port Edwards Dam well, that was done during this shutdown, too. They added another gate at Port Edwards to the, da uh, to the dam, uh, flood control gate. So uh, to answer your question, yes, I think it was pretty close to that. But certainly it's been raised maybe two or three times since then, as they do with these dams, build them up higher in pond. Because the, the higher the level of water, or the head as we call it, and the tail race, which is the water after it's gone through the hydro, the difference in elevation, the fall, is what gives you the power. It isn't the flow of water going through a water turbine. It's the fall, the weight of that water. So naturally, raise it up here. In fact, I have a picture at Alexander House where they can't raise it any higher at Nikusa, so they're scooping it out below the hydroelectric plant to deepen it, again, to get that depth, that fall. Yes? I didn't get you. Um, anything about pre-white settlers, any artifacts, any evidence of anything that was Under the water? Yeah. No, I don't. No. I didn't find any or notice it anyway. Uh, I can't tell you that. Okay, well, thank you. With my, okay, within my limits. <laughs>